Yo, what up y'all and welcome back to another one. Woo, look at that hat, isn't she pretty? Got the old shadow grass on there. Oh yeah, ton of new Ducks merch dropping August 24th, y'all. Be ready for it. Oh goodness, look at the mess I got going on here. But isn't it a pretty sight? Got the old decoys there, got some teal, got some mallards, and check this out. Got a bunch of new Texas rigs and a new bag. Yeah, so it's floater revamp day. Basically duck season prep. Another video for y'all. We did the duck, uh, we did my duck lease, and now we're doing an entire video all over floaters. And uh, this has this has needed to happen. I haven't had enough floaters of my own, you know, like I'd always use some of my buddies or have them bring some. But now with getting the new Excel boat that we're actually giving away at the end of the season, oh yeah, all you gotta do is subscribe to the Ducks T-shirt of the month. You have a chance at winning the Excel boat at the end of the year. Again, we did it last year, we're doing it again. But with having the boat this year, I've needed my own floaters and more of them. Last year I only had right at, what was it, three dozen total. So this year I was like, Bob, you need more of your own floaters. So today, what I do? I went and bought three dozen more. So I bought a dozen teal, and then over here I bought two dozen mallard floaters. Basically the same as my other ones over here. I got teal, the same teal. See, same teal same mallards just new ones because man it was probably what was it two years ago um i had one of y'all and i i have to say sorry from the bottom of my heart i'm sorry i can't remember your name but uh you hit me up on instagram and you're like bob uh would you trade me out some duck gear if i sent you some of my homemade texas rigs you're gonna love them and i'm like sure texas rigs are expensive you know if you go to walmart they're like $23 for six or 12. I don't know if it's a half dozen or a full dozen. You have to drop a comment down below, but they're expensive. So, sorry, again, I can't remember your name, but you were like, hey, how many do you want? And I was like, three dozen. I need three dozen of them bad boys. And check it out, how nice these are crimped. Just beautiful. Already come with a carabiner. So here's a dozen and a half, six ounce weight. Just a beast. Maybe that's a nine, I don't know. I didn't finish college, pretty excited. And, and, since uh, my last decoy bag I turned into the pigeon decoy bag, I got a new bag for all of these bad boys right here. So what's nice is now, when we get done, your boy will finally have five dozen floaters. And actually, what do we got, two dozen of them? No, a dozen and a half will be teal. So today, after we get done rigging all these bad boys up, we're gonna take them down to the water hole, and I'm gonna show you how, one, I set my little public teal spreads. It doesn't take much. I'm gonna show you how many decoys I usually use, what decoys I use, and where I sit that mojo a lot of times. And then while we're out there, I'm gonna show you my big duck floater spread, and we're gonna throw out everything and sweat our butts off together. Well, I'm gonna sweat my butt off. Y'all are just gonna be in the AC, probably laying in bed just watching watching and laugh at me sweat my butt off but a lot of you have been asking for a decoy rigging video and i'm not going to actually make the texas rigs but i want to explain to you guys in case you guys want to make them at home you can get all this hardware at your local hardware store uh, these little crimps you can get uh, the pliers there's actually some crimping pliers that come with these i'm pretty sure you can probably get them at walmart but this is just nylon cord string whatever you want to call it uh, you can also get it at Walmart, and both ends are crimped like the other one, and this one has a swivel on the end, so it can connect to your decoy keel, the keel of your deeks. Really simple. Texas rigging is simple, and a lot of people like it because, look, you pick them up, they're all on one carabiner, it keeps them clean, very clean. I love Texas rigs. You take your carabiner and you clip it somewhere, and it keeps them all together, and they don't get tangled and become a mess. Y'all know when you uh, use the long skinny weights and with like the string, the rope, yeah, and you, and you wind them up and you tuck them around the kill, you know, the, the lead weight, um, and then you put them in a bag. I'm telling you, you can get it done. I got it done like that for a lot of years, boys. I mean a ton. 
But if you want to make it a lot easier on you, go to Texas Rigs. How many times have you all got out to the water hole? You only got about 15 minutes to get the spread up because you're running late. Old Joey, you know, he had to stop and use he had to stop and use the toilet at uh, at McDonald's, and and yeah, it took a little longer. How many times have you dumped that bag out and they're just tangled and knotted? How many times have you had to actually cut the string and just throw them out knowing that they were gonna float away? Yeah, I, me too, me too. Boys, Texas rigs is the way to go. If your decoys aren't rigged up with Texas rigs, I would say get it done. It's really cheap if you go buy everything yourself. It's really, really easy. The, I think the most complicated thing is finding this crimper. If one of y'all actually wanna shoot a link down in the comment section where a lot of the viewers can find it so they can actually learn exactly what this tool and this crimp is go ahead and do it for everybody i would greatly appreciate it and i'm sure they would too oh now a quick uh quick pro tip <laughs> i'm not pro um on a few of them per dozen turn around and hook hook your and hook your texas rig on the back of the decoy on the butt just so they're not all facing the same way all the time. Now geese in fields y'all, a lot of them will face into the wind and walk into the wind a lot, but ducks, if you've ever watched them enough, plain, gotta love it. But ducks really meander a lot. They turn around, they dive down, they turn around. So. I would uh, suggest per dozen, just maybe two, three decoys, mount them on the back so it makes them a little bit different. That way, that way, whatever wind you got, they'll kind of be, they'll be different, you know what I mean? It's not an important thing. It's not a make or break deal. It's just um, adding some realism, you know what I'm saying? But uh, these pre-made Texas rigs, I have to say that, I, again, I apologize, uh, I feel horrible for not remembering your name. You guys can imagine how many DMs on Instagram and stuff I get a year, let alone a month or something. Um, but I appreciate it, man. If you'll drop a comment, the, the guy that made these for me, uh, like I said, I traded him some Ducks gear for these Texas rigs. Uh, the guy that, if you're out there and you're watching this, drop a comment down below and be like, yo, Bob, it, it was me. I appreciate it, man. These are nice. They are really, really nice. Nice four footers. Oh yeah, boys. Oh yeah. Whew. I'm sweating right now, but I'm dreaming of cold weather. I'm dreaming of cold weather. Snow all in my face. Mallards all in my face. And blue rockets just doing it dirty over the spinner. Well, check it out. That is a dozen and a half. All rigged up, ready to go. A dozen and a half. That boy put some big weights on them Texas rigs. Them are heavy. I'm pretty sure each weight is as heavy as the decoy itself. <laughs> but what I do with uh, with my Texas rigs, when I get them on my carabiner like so, I always pick them up and I always put a knot as low as you can close to the decoys. And why, the reason why, is because if you put that knot as close as you can to them decoys, it isn't going to let all these tangle up real bad down there. Keeps them nice and straight, doesn't let them tangle up very bad at all. So, there we are. Will it? Oh, yes it will. There we go. Well, there's that. Isn't that beautiful? This is why I love living where I live, because I can just jump in the side-by-side -side and go straight to the old duck hole or, or where we're going to be field hunting geese, anything, you know? Uh, this year, expect us to be doing this a lot. But we're going to head down. We're going to set a small teal spread, my go-to teal spread, every season. No matter if it's private land or public land, public land especially, this spread is my go-to. Bare minimum on the decoys because public, it usually means you're going to have to be walking in. You know what I'm saying? Doing a little bit of scouting while we're out here in the uh, side by side. Uh, scouting for water, that is. Uh, right here is actually where I had that epic solo uh, duck hunt last year. Uh, yeah, it's, it's one that I'll never forget. I'm just checking to see if it's holding any water. Um, and it's not, unfortunately. We need some heavy moisture here in Kansas to uh, make sure that the sheet water ponds that we have keep holding water. Um, if we stay dry 
we are here and check it out down yonder. I don't know, there's probably about 20, maybe 20, 25 geese down there on the end. Look at these, look at these till bombing in here. When I uh, pulled in, I scared up some teal, unfortunately. I, I tried pulling in on this end. I knew the geese wouldn't really mind me. They would go to the other side, but all the ducks, there's probably 20 or 30 ducks. So this is one of my other little holes. Uh, it's a beautiful little hole. Uh, this is the sheet water that I was talking about. And uh, if we don't keep getting rain, things like this are gonna go away. And the ducks are already loving it. The geese and ducks, they're both here every single day and they'll just kind of loaf here all through the day. Uh, this is an alfalfa field behind me. And then on the other side we got planted corn. And this is just yummy. They absolutely eat it up. They love it. I didn't want to spook them off though. I did pretty good. I didn't bump the geese off. They're all still down there. None of them got up. Look at that group of teal though. How pretty is that? All teal. <laughs> It's gonna be a good year. Y'all better be getting ready. Y'all better be making sure your mojos work. Make sure your batteries take a charge. Your spinning wing decoys, yeah, all those. Lucky Duck, Mojo, I don't care what brand it is. Make sure they work. Because today, I had to bring the old Dove Mojo. And believe me, it'll do its job. I've actually had to use a Dove many, many times during till season, and it works the same. They don't mind it at all. One extremely important thing that I'm gonna say right now before we get to throw in these decoys is during till season, this is gonna be a till season. We're gonna wrap up this video with a till spread, y'all. And then you gotta stick around for the next video to come because that's when we're gonna do all the decoys, make a big old duck spread, and I'm gonna go back home and get Fred and bring him down. So stay tuned for the next video, that's coming up. But the most number one important thing, always check your batteries on your spinning wing decoys. It's, a, it's extremely important because uh, before you know it, you get out there, you go to turn it on and it, it don't work. And you're like, but I charged it. Yeah, you threw it on the charger, but the battery was already toast and wouldn't take a charge. So make sure you check them. Check out this though. I haven't showed you guys this ever. I found this in the field. It's a homemade mojo pull. So to start this deal off, y'all, um, when I'm talking about public decoy spreads, I'm talking small because a lot of you guys know that I love doing my solo public duck hunts and I don't like carrying in more than a dozen decoys. And that's what I did last year. Y'all watched our teal hunts. Heck, even the one where I caught the teal, I think we only had like two dozen decoys out and two mojos and there was four guys. So it was, it was light hauling in, light hauling out. And that's the go-to on public walk-in hunting. So this is my uh, go-to dozen. What I got is one, two, two green heads. One, two, three, four, five, six teal. And one, two, two hens <laughs> that are hens. But then I took two other hens and I painted them black. Y'all remember the coot confidence decoy, right? Yep, I still got both of them on there. So, I've killed a lot of ducks over just this one dozen. Spread them out. Spread them out. All you have is a dozen. And all you have is a dozen decoys. Spread them out. I will uh, spread the big decoys out quite a bit on both sides. Because I get a lot of questions, y'all. A lot of people say, Bobby, is it okay to run mallards in my teal spread? Dudes, teal? I can guarantee you that teal love a spinning wing decoy way more than your floater ducks that you have out there, no matter what they are. Every teal hunt that I go on, teal wanna land on the spinner, on the mojo, call it whatever you will, but teal want to land right where the motion is. So, if I have any recommendations on uh, what's my thoughts on, you know, like flock of flickers or anything, it's okay to have a couple of them. But for teal, teal love spinning wing decoys. They will literally try to land on them. But that's uh, not right there. That's pretty easy peasy. So here we go, I'm gonna explain what I've done. And uh, again, I would use, I, I would not be afraid on a teal hunt to use a, uh, a, a dove spinner like this one here. This is a Mojo Dove. So this is exactly what I do, y'all. 
put this bad boy right here. Exactly what I would do on a solo public teal hunt. Exactly what I'd do. So over here I spread out some big ducks. And over here I spread out some big ducks. In the center I put my teal. And I only got six of them. Boom, 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 right there. I put them together right in the center, right where the motion's gonna be. So they're gonna see the motion, and then they're gonna see the teal. They're gonna see the motion, and they're gonna see the teal. These, on the left side, right side, big decoys, you can basically say that we use those to get their attention from far away. They're gonna see that spinner from far away, and they're gonna see that bigger decoy from far away. When they start getting closer, they're gonna hone in on the motion, and then automatically see your teal decoys. So, a dozen and a spinner is honestly all you need. I mean, I've got it done a lot of times with that. Now, if we have two, three, four people that are walking in and gonna be able to carry some more decoys, I don't mind sitting out two, three dozen with two mojos maybe, but that's the biggest you would ever need for public land hunting. I've never, I've never had to have a bigger spread than that you know what i mean but honestly uh the most important thing guys is motion have a spinner for teal you have to they, they love it but who misses this sight how many of you are ready if you guys are liking this video you got to smash that thumbs up button for your boy because who is ready for this who is ready for the old side by side for fred for duck season oh my goodness but honestly guys it's more important just getting out your decoys making sure your spinner works just getting them out in a hurry and getting hit being hid at, in public land is extremely important because there's a lot of people that just don't really try to to hide maybe they go hunting once or twice a year and they just don't think about the hide necessarily so get your decoys out there Teal, teal spreads, it's not a very intricate thing. Always face your spinners into the wind. Birds always land into the wind. It's easier for them. I'm gonna go home and get Fred. Uh, I'm gonna go get the rest of the decoys. And then I'm gonna come back. You guys have been requesting uh, some Fred update videos, so I think we're gonna kind of mix it up. We're gonna do a Fred video. We're gonna do a training session in the decoys. I thought it was a good idea. If you guys do too, stick around for the next video that's coming your way. It'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. But when this video goes up, I'm probably already in North Dakota shooting them honk daddies. I don't know. But subscribe if you haven't because it's going to be nothing but duck hunting coming up. It's almost here, y'all. September is almost here. Dove hunting is almost upon us. I'm losing my little because I'm just rattling. But thank you all for being here. Thank you for the view. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. I've been getting laid back, baby, you should know that I don't need your criticism, pessimism I've been keeping it on the DL, got a girl that